Welcome back everyone. In this video I'm going to take a look at the Arduino's EEPROM. Now the EEPROM is used to permanently store values so we may have some setup parameters that get changed through the execution of whatever code we have in the Arduino and we need to save them so that the next time it powers up it can remember what those values were. So that's what the EEPROM is used for. We can save values, we can read values and as I say in this video we're going to have a look at how to read and write values and also how to make sure that we're actually reading valid values from the actual EEPROM itself. I'm going to provide two methods, one's an inline sort of programming method and the other will be using a class structure. Personally I would much rather use the class structure but the choice is yours. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this little sketch. First of all, I've just included the header files from that library. The way I like to do this to ensure that you are using the right configuration file and to ensure that you create a configuration file on the EEPROM, I actually compare against a version number. So this is a little bit of a test routine that I've put together, but it will be going into the self-balancing robot uh, code base. So I've just used SBR 2.0 as the actual version number. And then creating a structure to actually hold all of the configuration information. So in this case, I'm going to store things like the PID parameters and things like that. These variables can actually be changed and I want to save them away so that they get reloaded at startup. And in that structure the last thing I actually add is a character array with the size equal to the version number that I've defined. And the reason I put it last is if there's an error in writing away the data to the EEPROM, they're going to be the last bytes that get written away. And if they're not correct, then we will load defaults rather than crappy data. And you can just define this structure to have whatever you want in it. It can be integers, that can be character arrays and things like that. As big or as small as you want within the bounds of what can be stored in the EEPROM. And as I say, just make sure that the version number is at the end of it. So the next thing I'm doing is actually setting up some default values. So I'm creating a variable of that structure type and loading it with 12 as the P, 2 for the I, 3 for the D, and the setting version that I've defined above. As far as saving and reading back from the EEPROM, uh, these are the two functions, basically a load configuration and a save configuration. What I want to do before I actually load the data from the EEPROM, I just want to check and see if that version number is correct. So I create a variable called saved version with the size of that setting version and I calculate where it is in the EEPROM. So it's going to be the size of settings, which is that whole structure, uh, minus the size of the setting version, which is the last variable in that structure. So once I've got that offset, I can use the get function in the EEPROM library, and I basically just provide the location and the variable that I want that loaded into. So I'm using that offset to load the saved version character array with that value out of EEPROM. And then I just do a string compare of that saved version against the text I've defined. If it equals zero, that means they are equal. And in that case, I get all of the settings. So from zero, because that's where I'm actually loading the data into EEPROM from zero, from byte zero onwards, and I just load it all into the settings. And that's the load. 
Now the save is really straightforward. At the end of the day, I just put settings into that location starting at byte zero in the EEPROM. Okay, and just to test it uh, in the setup, I just open the serial port and just wait for it to be ready. Just dump out what's actually in that settings uh, structure at that point in time, which, is, which will be those defaults. And then I load the configuration and again after the load I'm just printing out what they actually are. And in the loop, just to test to make sure that it works, I just set the p-value in that structure to be 20. I just listen on the serial port and if I get a capital S or a lowercase s then I just save the configuration. So that way we can run the application and see what we get. Then we can do a save and it should change from the default of 12 to 20. And the next time we start it up, initially on startup, we will have the default value in there. And then after the configuration, we should have that value of 20 that we've changed it to and saved. So now let's just take a look at how that actually works. Okay, so here we are. I've actually got a Adreno Uno plugged in and it's on the serial port, ready to go, correct board selected. Okay, so let's upload that sketch. Okay, that's finished uploading, so let's take a look at the serial monitor and just for clarity, I'll clear the output and hit the reset button and what we're seeing is before load, there's our uh, setting version number and our defaults, uh, P12, I2, D3. And then after the load, again, uh, nothing's changed. So those defaults are actually what we're using at this point in time. Okay, so let's now send an S and that tells us we're saving. Now, if we scroll back down in the code here, in the loop, before we start checking the serial port, we actually do change the P in settings to be 20. So in effect, what should have happened is those settings should be changed with the P value equal to 20. So let me just clear the output again. And if I do another reset, then before the load, it's printing out again the defaults of 12, 2 and 3. And then after the load, this time it has actually read in that value of 20 that we saved into the P. So there we can see that it's actually working perfectly okay. And that's how I plan to do all of my configuration settings in any projects I have going forward. I think I will create a class. So I might just stop the camera now and go away and do that. And I'll just come back and show you the result of that and how it can be used in setup. Okay, so back again, made a few changes. I've actually created a class that I've called settings and got a little bit of an example here of how that may be used. So let's have a look at the actual class. Nothing particularly outrageous here. You'll notice most of the stuff is fairly similar. So just the normal uh, bits and pieces with creating a class with the defines and the includes, uh, making sure to actually include the EEPROM header in this file. And same idea as far as a setting version. And I've actually used the same one. Also the same idea with defining the structure. And again, I've used the same one, but this time called it uh, parameters type. And then we get to the actual class itself. So in as far as public methods go, the actual initializer and we allow uh, defaults to be passed through and a save method. And we've got uh, one public variable, which is uh, parameter type parameters. And we have a buffer, which is a private variable, a byte buffer, which is the size of the actual structure. So let's have a look at the actual code. We have a look at the actual initializer. As I said, we allow a default structure to be passed through. And if we do get that, then we simply copy that structure 
into the buffer and you'll notice this code here is fairly familiar we're just looking to read the actual value of the setting version that's in the EEPROM so we're calculating an offset and then just getting that uh, saved version number independently and doing a check to see if it's the same as our actual version number for this project if it is then we load the EEPROM data into the buffer and the last thing we do is we give back a pointer to that buffer as a parameter type so it sort of overlays the buffer with that um, structure okay and if we have a look at save again just as easy as before uh, we're just putting that buffer uh, into EEPROM so that's the class nice and simple let's have a look at how it gets used just looking at the uh, main file here we've got the include for that settings class and then uh, set up the defaults so just set up that structure defaults with uh, values of 10 to 3 the actual setting version we're able to reference them because we've included that settings header so we're instantiating that settings class and we're passing through the defaults and those defaults will be applied and if the EEPROM data has the right setting version it will actually load the data and overwrite these defaults okay so our setup now becomes pretty simple we're just setting up the serial port nothing to do in there as far as setting up any of the data or reading any data or anything like that and then if we go down to the main loop I've basically just moved the uh, serial printing down to here so it's just printing out current values and just dumping out the version the P the I and the D value and same as before waiting for something on the serial port reading in any bytes that come in on the serial port if it's a capital or lowercase s then what we're doing this time is increasing the P value by 5 and then calling the save method to actually save it so if we upload this to the Adreno okay so that's done uploading now and you can see this is just continually scrolling but basically I've been playing around with this for a little while testing it and we've got a value of 45 2 and 3 stored in there now if I send an S we'll see that the p value actually changes to 50 now I guess the critical thing is what happens when we do a restart of the Adreno so let me just press the reset button and you'll note that it starts up with 50 so it has actually read that value from the EEPROM so you can see that this is quite a nice neat way of storing the settings and this will be the way that I go forward I believe now I guess you've got the choice of two methods just providing that as inline code and not having the class structure or please feel free to just swipe my code and use and abuse it as you see fit obviously this structure here you would set that up to include all of the parameters that you want to save to the EEPROM so you would just change that and where the defaults are you would just load in the yeah, relevant default values for your project okay well that's pretty much covered off on that i think if you like what i'm doing then please do like the video if you'd like to see more then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when i post something new and i'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at